So I got the distinct pleasure to shoot with JJ Ricaza at the 2020 North Texas Open this past weekend. And JJ is an awesome dude. Uh, he was super helpful. A lot of the pros get bad raps for not wanting to help reset and all that kind of stuff. That was not JJ. He pitched in, he was taping. He was one of the hardest working men on our squad. He was running the tablet. And he's just a genuinely nice guy, fun to be around with a great sense of humor, on top of being one of the best shooters alive. So he let me sit down and interview him at the end of the day, and we, it was a very brief interview, but we talked about the prevalence of Red Dot, the popularity of it growing it as a diagnostic tool, and we talk about training and get tips for kind of the lower classmen, middle classmen, and the upper classmen that are all out there. Uh, I do have to apologize for the audio on this track because my voice recorder, I've learned, had one of its channels go dead, so it's only gonna come out of your left channel, and the audio on my camera was basically wiped out due to the wind noise, so apologies on the audio. I know it's an issue and it's gonna get fixed in the near future, but you can still hear it still sounds okay. So, are you ready? Stand by. <laughs> finished shooting the North Texas Open with JJ Ricaza. Uh, JJ is, if you're not aware, he was the two-time national champion in back-to-back -back nationals last year. Yeah. Yeah. Three you got two out of three, didn't you? Yeah, two out of, no, um, 2018 was two, okay. yeah, two out of three. Two. Last year I went one out of two. One out of two. Yeah. Okay. Still not bad. Still not bad. Uh, JJ also has a background in uh, law enforcement. He was a air marshal. Yes, sir. And so he was in the air marshal training cadre. Um, so he's got a background with that. So in USPSA, carry optics, but also open have been getting more and more popular as the game continues to evolve, equipment continues to evolve. And given your background with law enforcement and things like that, I'm curious if you see a growing place for slide ride optics or what's your read on the slide ride optic as far as duty use is concerned? Um, as far as I'm concerned, the, the technology is there, the reliability is there. It's, it's no longer a taboo thing. I mean, to a lot of guys, the old folks, right? I mean, the old timers still want to rely on the iron sights and, and, and really blame the technology, but really the technology is there. It's, it's, it's such an advancement that's going to give you that advantage um, if you ever get in a shootout, for instance. So um, I just feel like it's such a much easier platform to shoot from once they learn you know, the basic, uh, if they go through the academy correctly. Sure, and in the air marshal program, I know concealment was at a premium. So even with the larger footprint of the optic, you still think the juice is worth the squeeze? Yeah, for for me, right? I carried for about ten years the undercover, and it was um, the butt end of the the gun was always the one that was the issue. The bottom part of it with the magazine and the base pad. So it, it didn't matter how high the the, the sights really were so that one was easier uh, easier to conceal so it didn't matter as long as we had the, iron, the, the red dot that was that was something that um didn't really affect the concealability i didn't think of so red dots are good to go according to jj ricasa <laughs> give it a thumbs up yes yes sir all right and same question for uh people who are new and getting into shooting considering maybe looking at red dot pistols before irons a very common thing i hear people say is i want to master irons and then i'll get a red dot What's your take on that? So when I did it, right, I, I started 1988. So there was only irons and then and that was it. For a long time, that was actually my mentality. Start in irons, build up foundation, and then go to red dot. If you never plan on going back to iron sights, just start on red dot. Like right now, it's all there. If you never plan on it, might as well learn one platform and just be really good at it. If you have, like myself, plan on shooting other things, yeah, then definitely I would start on irons and build that platform and the ability to be able to catch sights and stuff like that. But if you shoot red dot and get to get really good at learning how to point and really learning how to read that dot, that iron sights becomes pretty much not even a game player or not even a game changer for you. You're just going to see fast, faster than most folks that start off with irons and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, what about as a diagnostic tool? Do you see value in learning to shoot dots purely from knowing what the muzzle of the gun's doing, or 
So to me, in terms of a shooter, I, I, I believe they'll just end up seeing a lot faster than any guy that would just take an iron sights. So a diagnostic tool and all that stuff, I can directly communicate with the student, like, hey, what did you see on your sights? Where were your dots? And then a lot of times they'll, they'll, they can replay it as opposed to when you have three points of contact or reference, everyone's like, I think it was a little high right. And it was always like that, I think. And then now we're trying to figure out which one it was, trigger or sights. But that red dot, it's like, oh, yeah, it was high. It wasn't even any target because there's just one point of reference now. Sure, sure. Uh, I've gotten, I recently switched to shooting Berettas myself. JJ is shooting the high speed Beretta, mm -hmm. the open gun, the 92X performance. When are we going to see the 92X performance and open trim in the States? It's, uh, I'm shooting the prototype version. Um, I believe they're about a year and a half out of it. Okay. Um, so next year, late next year, something like okay. that. Okay. So into, into 21, we should be able to see the. Start rolling out. Yes. Right sir. on, right on. And as far as uh, training's concerned, if people want to train with you, where, where do they go and find your class schedule and all that good stuff? It's kind of funny, actually. We took it down on the website. So the only way you could find me is actually email jessica.rakaza at yahoo.com because she coordinates all my schedule. She's your manager. Yes, sir. She's my boss. So um, I don't even know my schedule. Most folks are like, hey, where can I find you? I'm like, I don't know. My wife is the one that handles all that. But um, yeah, that's the only way because the website thing was just got too much and we couldn't control how many people were signing up. Sure. So it's a good problem. Sure. And for people who are just kind of getting into shooting and considering something like USPSA, IDPA, you see a lot of students. For the guy who's most curious about getting into it, they tend to focus on gear. Like, what's the gear they need to be? You work with hundreds, if not thousands of students a year. For the, for the total novice, what's the one thing they should be focusing on to get kind of squared away in the game, would you say? I would say start off with uh, manipulation. You get really good with manipulation at home by dry firing your gun. Whatever gear you come up with, that's not really important. As long as you have a gun that works and then you have your gear, get to know your gear and learn to just manipulate that as well as any GM or master would. I've always had this saying, if you can look like a GM manipulating your gun, whether reload or draw, you're on your, well, you're 50% of the way to becoming a GM actually. So, and it'll make a lot of people um, a lot more relaxed if you come show up to a match. You look like you know what you're doing. Even though you're not hitting targets, it looks good on video and all that stuff. Most <laughs> ROs relax a little bit, but if you're sitting there fumbling around and with pressure and all that stuff and your manipulation isn't second hand yet or it's not second nature to you, um, things kind of go even worse than what it is and they end up shooting even worse because now they're worried about this and their shooting's not up to par where they could have just spent some time just drawing and reloading at home when it's all for free too which is sure even better so dry fire before you hit the range 100 yes. percent. okay so what about the career c class b class guys who want to finally break out and hit the upper classes what's your advice for them i'm going to tell you right now there's two ways to get to gm uh, every person that i know that's ever been to gm including myself focused on two things. Manipulation, that was a 50% part, uh, that was the other one that I talked about earlier. Get really fast, get real comfortable with drawing your gun as fast as you can and reloading as fast as you can without the fear of possibly dropping the gun or messing up the magazine, right? That's number one. Number two is learning how to shoot really fast, not necessarily accurate, but not wild like you're missing all over the place, but just shoot and hit targets really, really fast. Once you get those two figured out, eventually the accuracy part of the game has to come to play. But those two things right off, right off the bat, if you're able to process the chaotic mess here fairly quickly because you're constantly pushing your speed and all that stuff, and then your manipulation is up to par like a GM would look like, you're going to skyrocket pretty quickly. Um, your, 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 your basically charter progression is going to be pretty steep going up. You just had something that makes me uh, question. So pushing what what is your trading cadence like are you somebody who believes in like speed mode and really get out over your skis let the wheels fall off and then kind of figure out where the line is or yes yeah. so in my training there's I, I come up with three different programs right three phases three phase one two and three phase one's basically the three pillars of shooting which is which is your shooting your sorry accuracy speed and movement once you got those three figured out go to the phase two phase two is where you explore and push and where you're willing to fail find out where your 100% is, where the wheels fall off, take it a little bit back and then constantly push. And that's where you develop quite a bit. Near the match, maybe a, a month before the match, two weeks before the match, three weeks before, whatever it may be for you. Phase three is where you, you turn it over from development into preparation where you change your mindset and how you approach the stages. And now you're just shooting at basically 90, 95%. And your job is to find that 90, 95%. Um, and so you take that to the match and you're no longer questioning how fast you can shoot this. You're more focused on the process and then leads to better execution and then it leads to a better result. Very good. And as far as the A and M class guys, what does it take to kind of break through that ceiling and get that vaunted G car that everybody wants? That's 
the crazy part that because most of the guys in the a and m are really fast already um spe specifically most guys that are in the m most of those guys are really fast already they're just not connecting a lot of those work will have to be seen on video it's through their movement they're losing a lot of these things most guys will be like man i shot that as fast as i could i don't know where i lost two seconds i don't know where i lost a second and then wherein you really couldn't and then and then your answer usually is like i gotta shoot faster in order to make up it's not the shooting it's all between when the gun's going off and when the gun's um right before it's going off so managing dead time correct the dead time and the dead spaces in between stages is where you see a lot of people and it's really the small things a lot of times it's the the transitions, right? The flat line transitions, I call it, or the movement, the way they exit, the way they enter. And really the biggest thing where GM excels is merging positions and merging, and blending targets together. When you're able to do that and listen to the rhythm and the, the, the dead spaces starts to pop up here and there. Just as a cutaway, you'll be seeing on the screen right now, the last stage we shot of the day when we were totally gassed, had a low port. <laughs> and everybody had some crazy way to get into the low position. JJ had this beautiful way where he went down on a knee with a straight leg, took two targets from the right, then everything under the low port and cleaned it out. And that was a GM's approach to shooting <laughs> the targets versus all of us uh, middle-class hacks doing it. So uh, JJ, I really appreciate you sitting down with me. It sounds like JJ's light ride is leaving and they gotta get back in the car. <laughs> but I appreciate you, so thanks Thank for you shooting so with us. Thank you so much. Appreciate Rick. it.